Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Wind-Up with me, Helen Ashcroft. Now my guest today is Anne Weir from the Hathor Dance Group. And I have to say, I've never heard of the Hathor Dance Group. No. Where are you from? Um, we're based at HD1 Dance, um, just inside the Ring Road. Um, the place is owned by a, a, an old school friend of mine. Right, so Hathor, where's that name come from? Because it is quite intriguing. She's an Egyptian goddess and she's known for many things as a lot of Egyptian gods and goddesses are. She's associated with um, farming, mining, fertility, gems, but also dancing and the arts. And one of our original members suggested the name Hathor because of the, dance, the link with the dancing and we've kept it ever since. So. so what sort of dance classes do you do? It's all um, Egyptian based belly dancing. My own personal style is more Rakshaki based rather than the modern cabaret style. I don't know what that is. What? Rakshaki, it's um, a slightly more disciplined, um, not exactly balletic, but without the um, cabaret style sort of holiday type belly dancing that people associate with. I was going to say, if I was going to describe somebody doing belly dancing, I would see somebody with a, a beaded skirt around the hips and possibly some beads on the, the hands and sort of wiggling the hips around. Is that...? We still wear beads and coins um, and we still wear quite a lot of jewellery. But the massive difference with the outfits is that we're all fully clothed because the skimpy clothing that you see, say, on the Nile, for instance, yes. is the touristy cabaret type, mainly. Right. Type of dancing. I should imagine then, with all this wiggling, there must be some good health benefits to it. There is. Um, it's good fun, but from the serious side, it's excellent exercise. Cardiovascular wise, it really gets you, your heart beating, your blood pumping. It's good for memory. There's a, a really good article, my favourite article, called Use It or Lose It, Dancing Makes You Smarter, um, by Richard Powers, I think it is. Right. And it's an article that's been written after years of study. And you can find it online. You can just Google Use It or Lose It, Dancing Makes You Smarter. So I can see that because I... I haven't read that article, but I did read something recently that about dance that it does improve the memory. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're talking about the health benefits, can anybody come along at any point or because of them doing cardiovascular exercise, do they have to be checked out by the doctor first? If you've got um, an illness or a, an injury, it's always best to, to get yourself checked out before you do any exercises at all. Most people who come to the class have a good idea of their own level of fitness and it's not, um, it's not limited by age. I've had people right. dancing in my classes that are um, quite severely disabled with arthritis in the 90s but I've also had people that are 16. Um, so the illnesses and injuries affect everybody at yes. any age. Yes. And so when we're talking about doing these classes and the health benefits, Obviously, if they're doing cardiovascular, it will help with weight loss as well as mobility. It helps to turn you up. Um, weight loss obviously has to be diet related, mm. um, but it does help to turn you up an, an awful lot because you're using the muscles in a very powerful way rather than just using them to make you stand up or sit down. Right. It's quite deep muscle movement. You see, I'm obviously, I am not a traditional belly dancer person. I won't say, say I can't wiggle, but I can, I'm not a traditional belly dancer sort of person. So would I feel uncomfortable coming to your class not being the sylph-like Egyptian? Mm, not at all. Again, it goes back to more the Hollywood type style, which is where most of the size 10, 26-year-old yeah. style comes from. It's for women and men of any shape and size. Right. My classes go from 16 up to however old anybody still feels they want to join. Okay. Any younger than that, they would either need to come with a female parent or guardian. Right. Um, so you're running at HD1. Um, how much are the classes? I have a, a class that's specifically for ladies over 50, and that's £4 per session. And all the other classes are £5 per session, and it's run on a drop-in basis. And is this your business? It's part of my business. 
yeah, I have many strands to my self-employment. Because I think, and um, what I'm trying to get at is, you did say before that it was a charity. No, we get involved with um, Hathor as a dance troupe. Right. Are involved in a lot of community and charity events. We go to support them, help them raise funds, whether it's organising an actual event that which I do usually for Kirkwood Hospice. It's fair to say. Or we might be dancing behind the charity buckets in a supermarket. Right. So, ah, I see now. So you have a dance troupe that goes to these? Yeah, that we support. And how many are in the dance troupe? Currently 11. 11 All members. different ages? Different ages, different sizes, different shapes. It is um, good fun. Yeah, I, I should imagine it is. And it, it's, it's nice and it's friendly whilst exercising because, as we've said, there's a lot of health benefits to this, aren't there? It's a... It's a a weight-bearing, mm. low-impact activity. Weight-bearing, I think, swimming as opposed to squash. Right. <clears throat> so it's weight-bearing, helping to build bone density, but there's no impact on any of your joints, which is why it's still easy for people who have various health problems, such as arthritis, like yeah. the 90-year-old lady I mentioned. Um, and the reason I have so many different classes, I have um, seven and a half hours of classes a week, Right. is so I can um, encourage people to come to the right class for their right level of mobility and um, stamina and, and any health issues that I know they've got. And so if somebody comes along, um, can they say that they want to be in the dance troupe or that they don't want to be in the dance troupe? Is there a, you know, do they have to join <laughs> to be in the troupe? No, they don't have to join to be in the troupe at all. Um, another side to my classes is I have a a Haffler performance troupe. A You've Haf really lost me. <laughs> a Haffler is um, a belly dance party. And again, oh. they're all organised for raising um, charity funds. You're going to have to happen... tell me what a belly dance party is because in my mind's eye, <laughs> I've just got all these bellies wobbling and dancing and <laughs> jiggling along. There's lots of belly dance troupes um, within this country and throughout the world. Okay. And uh, a Haffler, for instance, the next one we're doing is going to be in Halifax and people will come from the surrounding area with their own dance troupe and you all take turns in dancing for each other. People generally bring food to share and their own drinks unless there's a bar. If there's a bar at the venue then you're encouraged to use that one. Yeah. Um, you break for supper and then the next part of the evening is again taking turns in dancing for each other. And there's usually um, a bit of retail therapy in the form of a souk where um. people can buy jewellery and clothing. And you see, you sort of got me hooked when you mentioned the food part, and now you've mentioned the soup part. I'm just about there. What's you've not nearly to like? sold it to me. I know. <laughs> it sounds good and really, really friendly. It is. So, it what's is. the main focus of the troop then? What's, what's your overall aim <clears> for that? Um, for us, as part of Hathor, um, it is mainly supporting the local community and charity um, events that go on but also to try and encourage other ladies who either don't know about it or they think, oh, I'm not the right size or shape. And our, our troupe has been, I think, probably the best compliment we've ever had was it was nice to see a bunch of real women dancing because we're not 28 size 10. We range from about four foot seven to six foot two. That's 20 good. odd to 70. That is good. And the government agenda, or one of the government agendas, is to get people out and get people active. Mm. So where can people find out about the uh, organisation? They could ring the studio, which is HD1, and Liz or one of the other people on the desk will give them my mobile number. Um, they could Google um, Belly Dancing in Huddersfield, and my name usually pops up at the, at the top of the list. Um, maybe they could contact Molly here. Yeah. Is that a bit cheeky? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure anybody could contact Kirkley's TV and they'd be more than happy to pass on uh, you know, your details yeah. or contact you on Thank their you. behalf, no problem whatsoever. I think it's really, really interesting. I do. And, and yeah, I think it's... You're going to have a go? I, th I think I might. Um, what I will say is, if I am going to have a go, Kirkley's TV can't come and watch me no. at that point. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> if I'm wobbling, then I'm wobbling in the safety of that room. Yeah, in the privacy yes. of the studio. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but thank you ever so much for coming along and, uh, and having, having a chat. No, 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 you're more than welcome. So that's it for, uh, for today from myself. So thank you ever so much for joining us. Thank you to everybody behind the scenes who's made this uh, show possible. And uh, that's it from me today. That's me, Helen. Bye-bye.
Thank you.